Well, hi, good morning, and welcome to my shop. Today is December 18th. Oh my gosh, December 18th. Wow. Now, the last video I posted ended rather suddenly as there was a family emergency taking place, and that's all been resolved now. So, uh, no longer in emergency mode here. Um, and the last video, I changed the blocking capacitor for the output tube grid and got a huge improvement in the bias of the output tube. Uh, and just a little bit uncomfortable with all that because it, it seemed extraordinary. 20 volts I measured on the grid, 20 positive volts. Never come across one that bad before. Uh, not that I you know, test every radio that way. Though I have some intentions of doing that. I, I, I don't fulfill it quite often. So, wow, 20 volts. Change the capacitor, 20 becomes zero. Fantastic. Now, what's next on the uh, hit parade here? So one of you sent me a note or made a comment that I put a metal output tube in, which I did. And that metal output tube is has like a built-in shield. The metal part of the tube is like a shield. Now you got to think about that a little bit. On the tube, <clears throat> the outside metal part is almost always connected to pin number one. So if this radio was built with a non-metal tube, it had just a glass tube there, uh, which is quite possible, um, then pin one would be handled differently. How it might be handled, well, we're going to take a look at the, at the schematic in a minute. That uh, terminal on the uh, socket could be spare and the engineers in their wisdom could utilize the spare terminal to make other connections. If I plug in a metal tube, it'll make contact with those other connections, whatever they might be. That could be a very bad thing. Uh, there could be, potentially, uh, high voltage uh, on pin one uh, because they're using it as a spare terminal. I plug in a metal tube, now the metal tube outside has that same voltage on it. So. Quite, it's a concern. I should have thought of it. Uh, can't think of everything though, of course. So thank you very much for pointing this out in the comment. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic and see see what the schematic can tell us about this. Okay, so here's the tube we're talking about, the 6F6. And pin 1 would be right here. You can see there's nothing going on with it at all. They're not showing any connections. They're ignoring it, just like they're ignoring this one over here. Um, does that mean this pin was not used for a connection? Um, for instance, for, maybe for instance, I don't know, I don't know, some connection somehow. I don't think this guarantees there's nothing there. They're in the back of the radio, there, there could still be something here. Uh, let's take a look at the radio. And we'll, we'll find out if I, did I take a big risk here? Well, I, I think I did take a risk. The question is, did it uh, did it uh, work out, or did, did you know, is it come? Am I, uh, did I come close to something terrible? So let me just double check the location of the output tube. It's definitely this socket right here. You're gonna have to use the other camera to get in there and get a good look at it. Let's see what is going on with pin number one. Okay, now the. Uh, here to point with. Okay, so the key is right here. You can barely see it. It's right there. So that makes this pin number one right here. This is pin one. You see there's a connection. You see there's a, uh, a jumper between here and here. Okay, that's a hint already that this is probably a ground grounded terminal. There's a capacitor connected. There's a wire connected there. There's something else connected right here. Lots of stuff connected in here. More indications that this is probably a ground point. It's probably grounded. Contrary to what it shows, because it shows on the schematic no connection. There certainly is something there. So what we'll do is we'll get the old meter out and we'll find out. Okay, I have to be honest with you. When I read the uh, comment last night, I ran in here right away. And check the situation so I am not going to be surprised by this result <clears throat> so is it connected to the chassis so we'll put one 
meter lead on the chassis and one on pin one. And what does the meter tell us? Zero. So it's telling us pin one has been grounded in this radio. Uh, there's a chance it had a metal tube in it to begin with. And it never had a glass tube. And there's a chance that uh, originally they made this with a glass tube and the pin was free. And then later they adopted the metal tube for some reason and began doing this down on pin one. But the schematic I have is from, is an earlier schematic. Very good. So nothing happened. I took a gamble there without knowing it, but I won. I won the gamble. Okay, next thing to do. What would be the next thing to do in this radio? There's lots of wax capacitors all over the place. The one I have taken out, it turned out to be very leaky. There's no reason for me to think any of these are, are not leaky. Some of them will be in positions that, you know, what does it really matter? It doesn't matter that much. Uh, the one the key one is the one I've replaced already. Um, there, there's, uh, I'm sure there's some others in there that uh, their leaking is not good for the radio. And there's a very big guy right here. Uh, that's interesting. That's got to be a one, or maybe a point one or a one microfarad capacitor. Um, you know, big, just a simple rule of thumb: big capacitor, big job. Uh, I'm gonna stop and think a little bit, figure out what what we can try next. So I don't have any interesting ideas yet on how to proceed, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so here's an old radio. It has deteriorated parts in it. Its performance must have deteriorated to some degree because of those parts. Can I detect the deterioration in the operation of the radio and deduce the condition of these deteriorated parts? Which I'm pretty intent on replacing anyway, but I'm trying to make this interesting. So an example of what I'm talking about would be the uh, this big capacitor, which I'm guessing is uh, the big capacitor you can't see in there, that one there. I'm guessing is uh, in the uh, screen circuit and it's a very important job to uh, hold the screen voltage very very steady um, if uh, if if it's not working uh, assumably it's it's not working as well as it should um, what would the result be in the radio um, I guess in the worst case you get uh, you know, uh, really bad misoperation, very, very low output, uh, heavy distortion, uh, oscillations. Uh, oscillations probably, uh, probably a big, big part of the problem. Well, none of those things are apparently happening. I played the radio and listened to it. Didn't, didn't. I, I, I couldn't hear anything. Weird going on. How, how would you come to grips with this? Uh, uh, I, this, this whole idea. Maybe there's other. You know, I've just picked on this capacitor. There's other circuit capacitors whose deterioration may be uh, may present itself in some kind of way um, so that's what I'm thinking while I'm drinking coffee and watching a uh, documentary on the origins of the earth um, okay I'm gonna go continue doing that and see if I can come up with a, a good way what's what's the next step here Okay, uh, continuing with this idea, I thought maybe uh, I would take a look at the schematic and spot of some of these capacitors that I'm, I'm, I'm bound to change out and uh, consider uh, what might be happening if they're bad. Wow, you know what's going on here. See how this, this capacitor is the one I changed and you see there's, there's no value on it. There's another one over here. No value on it. Here's another one. Uh, here's a, a couple more down here. They're just putting the value on the small ones. Why? Why? Why, <laughs> why would they do that? Uh, are all these other ones exactly the same size? So they're all like like this is a it's a 1.01 I think. These are all 0.01s. Oh, 
my gosh. Oh, two two twenty is probably this. Two twenty picofarads. Um well that's not terribly helpful, uh not putting the size. But I think we can be pretty sure they put the size on this one. They put the size here, 0.05. They did not put the size here. Yes, they did. 10. <laughs> oh. Am I just not seeing it? No, there's nothing written here for these guys. Well, okay, we can guess that these are, in fact, larger wax capacitors at 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, something like that. Um, okay, what? just an annoying thing here. Let's find that 0.1. Here it is, 8.1, because there's another one here. I only saw one in the radio. Is there an even bigger, like a 1, a 1 microfarad? So what's this guy doing? So he is on the screen, as I guessed, on the screen coming up from the B+. Plus. And it's just paralleled with a smaller capacitor. Oh no, a much larger capacitor. Oh my gosh, this is the small one. Oh, 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 oh. So this could be part of the large tubular you know, capacitor that's sticking out of the top of the radio. It almost certainly is. Okay, um, that 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 changes the picture dramatically because I think what's happening here is they're trying to apply an awful lot of capacitance, and that's where the ten microfarads is coming from. But the problem, and they've used an electrolytic capacitor to get to that level. Uh, they really want to shut down any variations in the screen circuit here to make absolutely sure that it's very stable DC with no signals in it right here. But the problem with the electrolytic is it doesn't do well at higher frequencies. So they've thrown in this but in parallel with it to capture the higher frequencies uh, that might be here. Now what's going on over here? So over here we have Wait, wait, wait a second, how is this done? Well, what is this? Yeah, so this is a ground. Okay, very good. This is a ground. And we have uh, point 0.1 over here, but no 10. But then they see this 10 is, is, is really is really doing doing what? The, the 10 is on here. So the, the 10, you could, you could mount that, you could show the 10 down here. It would look it would become more apparent that, uh, whoa, what, what happened here? Oh, that's not screen. This is the screen. Okay, this makes more sense to me now. So, so these two guys are silencing the screen circuit, and the screen circuit is applied to the two screens on these tubes. Okay, well, what was happening over here? S, S, U, S, D. Uh, okay, I, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm just not thinking what's up. Uh, but uh, look, this is the cathode connection here. Oh, suppressor, SU, a suppressor grid. Yeah, just connected to the cathode. Then this is the bypass capacitor for the cathode uh, resistor here. Okay, so now that I've realized that this is not the screen at all, it makes sense. That's something we're checking into down the road. But here's a big point one then. Um, is this the one that's on the side of the radio I'm looking at? I uh, was looking at or showing uh, on camera earlier. Um, so if this guy were leaky, I don't think it's any big deal. There's a, lots of current flowing in here. A little tiny leak through here wouldn't matter. Loss of capacitance here. You need to be a pretty bad, pretty like that, to be awfully wrecked to have, you know, greatly reduced capacitance here, but. It would stop the bypassing of this resistor if there was no capacitance here. And they put a big one, so it's important to the radio's operation. Now, if this is not bypassing properly, I think we just get weakened output, which is very, very hard to uh, measure and detect and become aware of. You could always throw a capacitor around here, like take a point one and just in the radio, just temporarily stick it in there and see what happens. 
that, you know, that's probably a better way of uh, checking this stuff out. Now, if this point one is not working well, I, 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 if it were not there at all, maybe something untoward would happen, some oscillation or something. But any, you know, really, you could, you could. Uh, this is another heavy, heavy current circuit, so a leak in here, not critical. Uh, loss of capacitance here, just what I was saying. I don't know how how would you like what measurement would you take? Uh, what the radio operating that you'd say, aha, I know what's causing that. Um, not happening there. Okay, let's quickly go through the other capacitors that the label is here, like this one. So I have a 0 0.05. Oh, this looks complicated. So here's the volume control. This is a tap. 10 meg ohms. Wow, and where's it going? This is the tone control. Yeah, tone control. Tone control. I guess the L is right on top here. <laughs> what happened to the L? Tone control. Bob, there's no room for the L. We'll just write the word and they'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, this has got to be one of those things where the guy was lettering this and when he got to about here, he went, uh-oh. <laughs> But he decided he would just carry on. Oh, there's the L over here. Just grab that L and I guess it's a shared L. Okay, I'm losing my mind here is what's happening. So what would happen if this guy's not working well? Uh, wow, you know what? I'm not going to be able to analyze this. It's a little too much going on here. <clears throat> Don't. Uh, yeah, it's over my head. Not sure what would happen. That's not, there. or or how I could detect ahead of time that there's a problem there. Um, <clears throat> by doing some kind of test. Okay, so here's one. Okay, so so this one's job is to ground the bottom of this coil signal-wise. Uh, you know, I I don't, I don't know if this is going to work out for me. You know, what would I ever do to the radio? Put a signal into it or some sort and go, aha, it must be this capacitor. It's, this is not this is not coming through in my head as I'm doing this. Let's go way to the front here. Uh, so show me a capacitor up here. Here's one. So if you notice from the grid, Capacitor, and I am going to guess that it connects one way or another all the way out to the antenna. I mean, it must. It's coming from the grid here. So, this very large resistor is, uh, you can think of it almost like an open circuit. And so, all the antenna signal is passing through this capacitor. Capacitor is connected to a grid. So, if this guy's leaky, that could have consequences. The grid is probably getting a bias, a variable bias voltage. Probably coming through this 2.2. Probably coming all the way, all the way. There's another 2.2 here. All the way, all the way to here, which is the basically the point where you can begin to, you know, literally de detect audio at this point. Um, so it's also a DC voltage building up here. So that's the AVC voltage being applied back here. Now, if this capacitor is leaky, then this voltage could push some current through here. Oh my gosh, I hate this switch here. What all is going on? It appears to connect only in one position. That doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, everything's got to get to this grid. Golly, everything has to connect to here. Did they draw this wrong? There appears to be no long arrow here at all. There appears to be nothing that ever contacts the internal part here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's a through connection. Here we are, through connection right there. So it's connecting down here. Oh, this will just uh, cause my uh, brain to bleed if I if I uh, 
we'll just do this on a sort of more of a general basis. So one way or t'other, the output of this transformer is getting fed into the grid through this capacitor. If this capacitor were open, the radio would go essentially silent, uh, at least from the antenna. If it were shorted, you would, you would, again, I did this crazy switch. It has to be a connection to this line all the time, except for in the phono position. Now, is this shown in the uh, phono, phono position? Is there a phono position? <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't I turn the band thing? There's seven settings for six bands. So the seventh setting, this is the seventh setting. And which way are you rotating this? They, they haven't put an arrow on it. Oh my god, I'm totally totally bonkers here. Well, I don't I don't get it. I, I don't get how they've shown this unless this line really comes all the way to here. All the way to here. That doesn't make sense either. Well if you snap it once, this will definitely contact here. And this would contact here. Oh, I, I'm not figuring this out. Um, if this were uh, not shorted, but had no capacity, it couldn't pass the antenna signal, we wouldn't hear anything coming from the antenna, or it would be reduced. So if, we, if this were weak, and we put a proper one in, we would get more signal out of the radio. We bypass this capacitor with an alternate capacitor and the radio's volume picks up quite nicely, then we could we could know that this is not working. But that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for that kind of test. But maybe that's all I'm gonna get. Okay, I think this whole search was a failed a failed mission. I don't think I've come up with any nifty way to uh, stand outside the radio, uh, test it, and then go, aha. Not in this case, not not in these cases. But I had noticed the whole kinds of capacitors with no ratings on them. Shoot. Okay, and you know it's not bad to spend time staring at the schematic anyway, because um, it takes time to notice everything, and uh, so maybe that's all this really was—an exercise in staring at the uh, schematic. Okay, I'm going to stop and have a little coffee because I'm breaking right down. And then we'll uh, we'll go after this capacitor. We'll try, try to find this one because we should be able to find it right off the grid of the first tube. We'll, we'll start there. Start right at the front. Okay, in hunting for that capacitor, which I, I imagine to be up in here. The antenna terminals are right here. Antenna coil up on top. Some wires dropping down over in this corner. While I'm hunting away in here, trying to spot stuff, what I did spot is way at the back, way up at the top there, you can see a capacitor, wax capacitor. I'm going, oh no, look at that thing. How am I ever going to get in there and replace that? But as I looked at it, you can see the wire on the right is actually going onto the chassis. Can't see this in the camera. Well, you know what? I'll switch to the other camera. I will switch to the other camera now. I think the autofocus is running here, so so looking way in at that capacitor. What are the chances my my camera's gonna focus here? Chances are nil. Okay, hang on one second here. I think we gotta go about that distance there. Just bear with me while I sort this out here. Um, there goes the autofocus finally. So the weather, the weather here uh, generally is unusually warm. Um, it's uh, so that that focus is good there, isn't it? Okay, so I've locked the focus there. Yeah, getting back to the weather. It's not very Decembery here. It's uh, a couple degrees above zero. All the snow is gone. Rain is falling. 
it's it's kind of a disastrous sort of on the other hand you know travel is easy it's easy to travel through rain okay let's as opposed to uh, a snow okay here we go oh <laughs> yeah tur turn on that camera that that would help there let's try it again okay now if you look at the oh I'm glad I did this <laughs> because it looks different in the camera. So I thought when I looked at that end of the uh, capacitor there, the wire came out and was cut. It looks like it's cut. But no, it's going behind the green wire and tied to that terminal. So the story I was going to tell you, which is no longer true, was somebody cut that wire and this is the replacement for that capacitor. That's the story I was going to tell. Uh, I don't think it's too accurate of a story anymore. So, uh, something I've noticed in this radio, I didn't notice it until now, but it's kind of obvious. I, I noticed it when I'm looking at these terminals. They're all painted with this yellow paint. You can, you can see it even on here. Uh, every, every soldered connection, well, maybe not those. <laughs> every, virtually every soldered connection has yellow paint on it. Now, there is some anti-rust material that's yellow, but that's usually applied right to the chassis uh, in military radios and stuff like that, and it's a little bit uh, toxic. What's this yellow paint? Hmm. It's not every connection has yellow paint, but virtually every connection. You probably missed a couple, whoever's doing this. Connection painting thing. And wh what is the paint? It, it must be some kind of anti any corrosion material but it's not it's just kind of dabbed on there don't know I haven't seen that before in a radio okay so I, I was hunting for the capacitor through which all the audio is or uh, RF is passing to get to the grid of the first tube this is not it because this capacitor is grounded you can see the ground connection so but wow am I gonna have to go in there and change that thing oh boy that's just about impossible. And as for the uh, look at the red capacitor there, well, that's a little unusual. So occasionally uh, they'll have a capacitor in here which is designed to compensate for variations in the uh, temperature of the radio and uh, to avoid tuning drift. Oh, there's another red one here. I was going to say, maybe that's what these red ones are, but I'm just taking a wild guess. Um, so we're going to have to trace from the uh, grid of the first tube and, and find where this uh, where this capacitor is. You know, the capacitor size was not stated, and I'm just assuming it's a wax capacitor. So that's the tube socket. I don't know which pin to look at here right now. Hard, hard to see the thing. Okay, I gotta figure out which which pin is the capacitor on. Okay, that's the question. Which pin for the capacitor? I'm gonna peek myself at the schematic, and I will say it is on. Oh, in this particular tube, they haven't shown the. Uh, that's okay. I was going to say, I haven't shown the key in the diagram, but there's two 6SK7s, and they show the key, the pin layout's exactly the same. Okay, very good. So we would be looking at pin number 1, 2, 3, 4. Pin number 4 should have a 2.2 .2 megaohm resistor on it, and this capacitor I'm after. Pin number 4. Okay, pin number 4, right? So just looking with my own eyeballs one two three four okay there's four is up in here and good grief how am I going to see back there well you know what I see I see a uh, a mica capacitor now is it connected there yeah it, it, it's impossible to know for sure okay then it goes down to this terminal strip and it goes from the terminal strip the, onto the switch. 
what's happening at the terminal strip? Nothing. The terminal strip's just picking up the lead from the capacitor. So it's a capacitor to the switch. Isn't that what we saw? So let's look back at the schematic and I'll flip it up on the screen here. So again, okay, this is the capacitor I'm trying to chase down right here. And I can see a bit off of here. Um, this is a, there's a terminal strip. Uh, wait a minute. The terminal strip. Um, I, 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 I kind of forgot what I just saw. The capacitor I can see. This is all blocked from view here. Is a large uh, uh, picofarad capacitor of some amount. Um, and in the other end, yeah, yeah, that's right. The other end. Okay, so so one end appears to come straight to this terminal, but I can't see it clearly because the view's blocked. The other end goes to the switch. There we are. Now on the way to the switch, there's a terminal strip, but there's nothing going on except the capacitor is attached and then a wire down to here. So that's got to be the one. That's got that's a. Uh, so many picofarads. Why don't they label the value on it? This is not helping me at one one bit. <laughs> but but there is a capacitor down in there. Good grief! What capacitor is that? Maybe, maybe this one. Again, it's just not. There's no size on it. Come on, makers of this. Now I've got another version of this schematic sitting right here. Is it any different? No, it's just harder to read. Look, there's something written right there. What? What? What's that? Let's go back to the other one. It's, it's been removed. Whoever cleaned it up removed whatever that was. Come on, really? It looks like writing. Some they wouldn't remove the values of the capacitors. Whoever did this work. They wouldn't do that, would they? Uh, for instance, this one over here, by the output tube, still has no value there. What a mystery. That's a mystery. Um, it's not helping me at all, because I was really counting on, on this being a wax guy. <laughs> so, okay, apparently not a wax guy. Uh, I never saw this resistor coming off here. You think this wire goes to the terminal strip and then off of that would come the resistor and the capacitor. It'd be a good reason why there's a terminal strip. Let me look again in the radio and see. What I find is that even though I might be convinced of a certain arrangement in the radio, if I find something a little anomalous and, and I don't uh, pay attention to it, then I won't find out how wrong I really was about what I was thinking. So we're trying to spot Oh, yeah, no, for crying out loud, there's two capacitors here. <laughs> wow. Mr. Observation. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, my, I think my earlier observation was correct. So, I showed you the one up here, but the one I was looking at earlier is actually down around here. Let's look at that one. I'll get the close-up camera going, and we'll take a look at that. up in this area yeah yeah I was showing you this one way up here but down here see this one now look see, the wire is cut the wire is cut there's yeah clearly the wire has been cut on the end of that capacitor and its replacement is going to be this one which then he, he attached to this ground point as opposed to that capacitor's ground point which is down there. Sometimes doing these kinds of changes can have bad, bad consequences but uh, apparently not. So there we are. Very good. Okay. Uh, my earlier... Okay. Wow. <laughs> So I was right, then I was I was uh, wrong about being wrong, 
and now I'm right about being right again. At least that's what I think at this point. But what's all that about then? Well, so somebody's gone in and changed the very capacitor that I... No, that capacitor goes to the ground. So what capacitor is that that got changed? Okay, so yeah, ground on one side and the other side... Oh boy, oh boy, it's going to this terminal that's going every which way. Oh, wow. A lot of schmozzle in there. When I look at it this way, it looks like everything is connected together at the bottom. I think even if I swing the camera like this, it continues to look like at the bottom there, there's a resistor and a pile of capacitors and a wire and all kinds of it's all tied together. But when you finally get down here, you see, no, 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 they're not tied together. Not at all. It's got a front terminal and a back terminal with the resistor on it. And this, this capacitor at a glance, you'd think it's it's connected to that front terminal, uh, you know, it's in the schmozzle, but it's not. It's connected to the back terminal. And then that terminal is probably where the uh, original uh, capacitor down at the bottom there that's cut away was going, no doubt about it. Okay, so somebody got this one changed, and I uh, was going to try to figure out which one it was, wasn't I? It's tied to a terminal with a resistor on it that is... What's that look like? Orange? Green? Red? That's strange. 30? 3,500? 3,500 is an odd number. Okay, we're going to look on... Well, what coil is this? Oh, I don't even know where to look on the radio, really. 3,500 is a weird number. Let's see if we can spot a resistor with 3,500 ohms on the schematic. There, there can't be too many. 3,500. Would uh, They would write the whole number out, probably. Like this, 4,700. Only it would be 35... Where's the resistors? Not many resistors here. Okay, coming back this way. Pretty good at labeling the resistors. I don't think we're going to find a 35. That's a very strange number. 30, 30, this is 33K. No, we're looking for 3,500. Well, <laughs> yeah, what do you do about this now? Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, it's, it's attached to a coil. It's attached to a coil, so it would be associated maybe with these. That says one, one K there. Or it's associated with these. Or it's associated with these. No. There's no 3500 coming up. Just a 47. It's on a terminal that has the... Uh, um, It's got a point zero zero five sprig that somebody installed, and then it's got that resistor, 
and a couple other capacitors. Oh, I'm reading. The, I'm see, I know I'm seeing this wrong. Okay, let's look back at the radio and get this right. Oh my gosh. Uh, what are we trying to do? We're trying to determine where this is on the schematic, or that one that got replaced. The same, the same thing. So what we're trying to do, it does go to ground. The other side goes to this terminal. Does it? That's the part I gotta, I gotta switch cameras here. Okay. So it goes to the back terminal and all that's back there is that resistor. Look at it again. It's orange, green, red, silver. Is it a replacement? Uh, it goes to ground. Is it a? Re it looks like it might have been resoldered down there. Somebody replaced the forty-seven with a thirty-five hundred. It's the closest they had in their uh, in their kit, and then they soldered it down there. Uh, that, that's quite conceivable. So it's a 4700. Okay, if, let's suppose it's the 4700. Let's look at the uh, at the uh, schematic again. Uh, so it, 4700 goes to ground, but it's not hooked up. There's no capacity. No, 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 no. I don't think that can be it. Oh, I don't like this uh, when there's uh, stuff like that kind of you know, not adding up, things not adding up. Perhaps you've seen, you've spotted it and I haven't yet. Maybe that's what's happened here. Um, but uh, can't look at this all day. At some point I gotta assume uh, the resistor really isn't on this schematic. Um, okay, resistor's going to ground. Well, there's this one. Um, it's a it's a resistor capacitor. Resistor capacitor parallel going to ground sounds like a cathode situation. Let's just trace back some cathodes here. Cathode. Ugh. So the cathode is uh, current is flowing through these coils. I, 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 I. That's to enable the oscillator and the mixing to take place. So, so that, that didn't work out. I was thinking I was going to come across a uh, like an arrangement like this. Thirty, thirty-five hundred on a cathode. Any, any, any cathode got a resistor? Any, any cathode got a three ninety? Any cathode. I've already looked at this one. It goes right to ground. That didn't work out. I was assuming it was a resistor and it's bypass. Doesn't appear to be the case. Um, how, how are we going to ever identify these things? They are just kind of in the middle. Of, I have to identify what coil they're up, up to. That's really not possible for me. There's no coil diagrams on this uh, schematic. So we can't we can't really you know figure it out. Right. Oh man. <laughs> and you know what? Whatever the problem was, this somebody has fixed it already, so why am I even worried about it? Um just because things aren't adding up and I don't like that. Uh okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a break, drink a little coffee, and <laughs> think some more about this. Okay, I didn't do so well on the last game. Find the capacitor, so let's let's try a new game. Find the cathode resistor. That's this one here on the 6SK7 IF amplifier tube, and it's associated 0.1 capacitor. So I'll look for this guy and see if I can't have some success here today at something. It's on the cathode, which is one, two, three, four, five, pin five of the cathode, pin 5 of the tube.
Okay, let's go look at Okay, I think I'll use the uh, close-up camera right away. Pin, pin five. Okay, just making sure I'm looking at the right tube here. The tube between the cans. Here we are. It's this one. Pin five. Show me pin five. So we count one. One, two, three, four, five. And we see a wire coming from the pin five. Let's just put a little bit more light on it here. Count again, one, two, three, four, five. So there's a wire. It looks like it just comes over to pin three. And then it meets up with this resistor, body and dot. Whew. Body is what? Body is red. 27. Uh, oh, that's a, a huge resistor there, value-wise. This didn't work out. This didn't work out at all. Um, there, there is a big, fat, high-wattage resistor sitting right here. 10k, Ooh. 10k. I don't remember seeing one of those. 10, 10k. It'd be 10m on the diagram, and that's connected to pin number 876. What happened to the? Uh, <laughs> what happened to the cathode situation? There's another wire coming off there. Is there? I don't think so. I think I think that wire. And I, you don't know which one I'm looking at, but it's just in on the other terminal because otherwise there's nothing connecting to that terminal so that wire's got to be there okay um, well I just see a jumper coming over to three how, how does that make sense jumper coming over to three okay let's look so I'm looking here and I'm looking at five and I'm seeing a jumper over to three there it is and resistor well 270. Well, maybe I'm just reading that resistor value totally wrong. Uh, body and dot. Body body is red. So two, and there is a, uh, a purple color in there. Yeah, I think I probably just read it wrong. Uh, okay, so we'll measure that and see if it's 270. And then where's this guy hidden? It must be on wires. So we'll have to trace a wire off of this this has to have this capacitor connected to it. Maybe it's coming off this terminal. Okay, back and take a look. You know, I can make this easy and just you know, replace like for like, but I'm, I'm trying to inject some uh, interest and fun in this. And uh, what what are you doing? What what are you? <laughs> I'm just. Oh my gosh! You know, I've been at this too long already this morning. We're we're talking about this one here. Yeah, this one. This is the guy. So. We should see uh, a capacitor connected. So there, there is another wire under there. Where's it going? Oh, right to here, right to this, right to here. Here he is. Point one. There it is, right there. Okay, kind of staring me in the face. It's a physically small capacitor for a point one. Let's see, it's only 200 volts. So this big guy back here, whose value I have not been able to read because it's not... Oh! Positive! Oh! My gosh, this is an electrolytic one. Okay, okay. Lots more. Hey, the news is coming in. Well, this is the bypass to pass that resistor. We need to measure that resistor. Um, you know, if it's on a cathode circuit, so a little bit of a leak in here isn't going to cause a problem, but lack of capacitance would. Um, let's measure that resistor there. How, how, do you, how do you get 2700 out of that? Or 270? You got me. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it. Don't they say read it and weep? I don't think we're going to be weep, weeping. Oh, there goes my phone again.
Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I live in uh, Huntsville, and I have an old tube radio. Uh Uh-huh. And it was working fine for several years. It's actually in pretty good shape. But for some reason, the volume just dropped off yesterday. Uh, Yeah. So I think some component probably um, came to end of life. Oh, it could be. It could easily be. And I'm just wondering, I have to come uh, through Aurelia on Thursday, and I'm wondering if I could drop it off with you. Uh, I think that's quite possible. Just tell me again what what type of radio it is. Okay, it's a Philco. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I don't have the... Uh, I have to open up the back to get any more details, but it's, it's basically it's got three or four or five tubes in it. Can you guess as to how old it is? Maybe it's probably from the um, 40s or 50s. I don't okay. think it would go back to the Okay, that's exactly what I'm curious about because uh, when things get back into the mid and early 30s, they can be, especially with Philco's, the situation changes a bit. When it comes yeah, I don't think it's that old. It's, um, yeah. It looks more like 40s and maybe even 50s. Is this a floor standing radio? Or no, is it? no, it's just a, uh, it's just a tabletop. Yeah, tabletop. Yeah, it's not very big. It's a small tabletop. Well, I'm pretty sure I can help you with that. Uh, okay. So you said you're coming th- down through Aurelia. On Thursday, yeah, you say? Yeah, um, uh, probably I'll be passing through there sometime in the mid-morning, around the morning to me. Are you able to text? Uh, yes, I am. Then you could send me a text to my phone here that we're talking on. Mm-hmm. And when you are when you have a better idea of you know, the time yeah, you're going to get I here. When I leave Huntsville, it's, it's a little over an hour. Yeah. Probably about an hour, so. Yeah. So I can be, I can text you when I leave Huntsville. Yeah. And <laughs> That should and then, uh, you can have a look, and I can pick it up sometime after Christmas. I guess. Yeah, actually, it might might be a little later than that, even because uh, I'm in the okay. middle, of, middle of doing one now, and I never know how involved these things get. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's and, uh, not a rush job. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's right, great. I'll um, give you a text on Thursday, then, and hopefully we can arrange something. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Okay. Now. That whole thing got recorded on my video here. What? The, <laughs> I don't. Know, don't think I should leave that there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop for now. Oh my gosh, my head is spinning. Okay, I think I got my head back in gear here. So we're gonna test the resistance of the cathode resistor and see what it is. It's supposed to be. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Where where is it? Where are you, man? Three oh five is coming up. Three hundred. And was it supposed to be two seventy, I think? Let me take a peek, quick peek. And it was supposed to be 270. So that's not too much. 300, that's not going to make enough difference to, to worry about. A 0.1 bypass. Probably also uh, not influencing the operation of the radio, even if it's uh, a little bit down. But I think I'm going to replace it because that's my goal anyway, is to replace all these wax. Capacitors. So we go after this one right here. A point one. A point one. Yikes. Okay, got to check my stock for a point one. Okay, new capacitor is in, and the old capacitor is out. It's here. Let's check this guy out. Let's see how leaky he was, or is. Fifty volts actually. Not opening. 
that's probably the case with all these capacitors. I've done two now and both of them have shown themselves to be bad enough that I can't even judge how bad they are. They are beyond the badness range of that testing device. Well, that's good. Um, probably I should test the radio at this point. So down this capacitor here. And we'll see what happens. So I put a uh, 100 volt capacitor in there. The one I took out was rated at 200 uh, volts. The actual voltage in uh, on a bypass situation like that is you know, 10, 20, 30, something like that. So I'm sure it's going to be fine. Okay, anything we need to do here other than plug it in. I'm going to stop. i got to go switch on the antenna here. Okay, lots of time has gone by since the last bit of video you were watching. Let's try this guy out. Well, I was going to we'll hook up the antenna after we get it going. Ready? Go. Whoa, I had the volume up full there. Okay, first with no antenna, and... Broadcast band, I believe. Okay, antenna connected here. Just one part to start. Oh, right, no strength. Okay, so no doubt it's working. Yeah, that's fine. Very good. Very good. Okay. Done for today. Tomorrow, uh, I may bite the bullet and uh, in install a new uh, tuning string, dial string. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know what I'll do. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, video. Bye.